A vivid nylon patterned print with avocado sweet and anaglyptus swirls, slumber ethyl bromide slowly down. Mm. She's counting hours and ticking clocks, so die is dead and cliff rocks, her blackouts to blackouts, what's on the box? A wireless, it's wireless, thermal non-slip socks, a slobber, a silence, a twitch, and we are back in the room. Ooh. Hey, who's been voted out? The man in the moon. Dreaming away time, gas bill, the bubble, old flames, new shames, pedestrian trouble. Warming the pot, let the brew steep, putting the world to right, oh, it'll keep. Released from the spell, that prescription haze, ethyl bromide awake, wake up, wake up, their eyebrows to raise. A lovely bit of French fancy from the quality save. Oh, how are you diddling? <coughs> oh, I was having a well earned disco discotheque nap. <laughs> Been listening to Placebo Domingo. Mm. Well, I've moved on from that kitty chicky chicky koana nana nana. Oh, that placebo's the real thing in my eyes. Dooby dooby doo doo dooby doo. I jolted out of my slumber like they'd just plugged in the defibrillator and shouted, All clear! And press shocking now. It was Elsie on the blower. Oh, she's gone all a bit Britney on me. Shaved her eyebrows off and had them thready back in. In the precinct. Used to be a cobbler's and key cutters. Well, they've still got all the old equipment, call themselves... Keisha's Fusion Bar now. Acrylic nails shaped like your back door key. Well, granted, it's freeing up room in your handbag in this security conscious climate. I'll put a padlock on that biscuit tin, Ondessa. Mm, you can often feel like a jail in the amount of keys you carry around. So I can see the sense in the nail thing. But yeah, you're only as a backup, mind you. Elsie's eyebrows now look like the McDonald's golden arches. She's had her eyebrows re-threaded with copper wire. And if she stands still for more than two minutes outside the British Dead Loss charity shop, she picks up splashback. Uh, I, I, I mean, feedback from Galaxy. Ooh. I don't know which Galaxy. But she can't hear herself think. She was convinced she had the gift for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, hmm. She started going a bit Britney. Do you remember me telling you, Ondessa? Since she made a bit of money on scale shoes. Elsie's family keep mentioning this youth in Asia. I said the nearest you've been to Asia is that large cash and carry in Longsight. And she said, I know of no youth in Asia. I said, you've probably forgotten it. And if the family are coughing up for the airfare, you should go. Well, she says, well, it says Amsterdam on the ticket, not Asia. She's not keen. Says it's, is that the place where they pee in the middle of the street behind a piece of corrugated sheet and a three, oh, and three feet away within shaking distance of the Grand Mare who's palming you off with a lager that's mostly frothy head? Well, I said that sounds like the dam. Do you remember Betty went years ago? She said there was a knocking shop next to a butcher's. Asked for a couple of slices of tongue and a nice ham shank in the wrong establishment. Mm -hmm. One way, you come out smiling but your dinner party's ruined. Mm -hmm. The other, you're still frustrated Ooh. but you'll not go hungry. Mm -hmm. One bemused, glazed, days and confused passerby got her establishments mixed up, mm -hmm. didn't she? Oh. Ordered a large bratwurst sandwich. Well, it changed her life. She was never the same. It knocked her rip out and she ended up cohabitating for a while with a downsizing dominatrix on a barge. Oh, it was a beautiful barge. Beautiful. Mm. And with a chihuahua named Beryl. Her family didn't flinch. Well, they don't over there. 
If you're not wearing dungarees one week and leather chaps the next, you might as well throw yourself in the single as live on it. So Betty told me any road. If these stag parties that feel the cut, but not the thrust of it. Don't be prancing round damn square, dragging, dragging up for a laugh with a bloodstream full of noxious substances. Oh, well, over there, they're very liberal. A coffee, shop crawl, a dare and a chap only has to wear a tiered top skirt for a weekend. And Dutch social services will see no problem in cutting off your downstairs front room necessary essentials. Oh, mm. oh yes. Some of these stag parties have ruined lives. Outbound they go as Philip, inbound coming down they wake up as Philippa. Try explaining that one to your nearest and dearest. Over there you can't even windowline your, your glazed front frontage without some passerby furtively lingering by your flat roof porch. Travel? No, not for me. There's times when I can't go to the toilet, never mind go on holiday. Amsterdam? Don't even think about having the warm glow of your peach mobile light bulb switched on in that canal side vestibule. I said to Elsie, do you remember when, when Betty went to Magaluf in the 70s? When she was automatically fat? She was waiting for a case at the airport. Shattered. Up early, couldn't get a breath, decides to sit down on the carousel. Well, next minute there's a loud beep and it switches on. Oh, it was like some industrial scale style bacon slicer. Rasher after rasher. She was sandwiched between the Samsonite light cured pastrami on Ravita. Oh, she lost 24 inches off her lower thighs. Well, her backside. Oh, it was a bloodbath. They could have grafted it all back on, but peckish, peckanese sniffer dogs wolf majority of it down. It's all this regrafting stuff on when bits get cut off nowadays. I thought they could only do it on apple trees and bushes, you know, roses, but oh no. They've even done it with somebody's face. Regrafted another one on. Say if you've been, you know, in a fire or a crash and that. I think they did the same for Betty. No one Dessa not grafted somebody else's face onto her backside. No, no. I don't think they've created the donor card for that procedure yet. Oh. Some sick bugger would put their name down yeah. to get the face grafted onto somebody else's backside. Or even just Elsie's backside. Oh, it doesn't bear thinking about. No, they grew Betty a couple of buttocks in a Pyrex dish. I don't know why they needed a dish. That was other than microwave proof, but hey, I'm not a scientist. Oh, pardon as moi. <laughs> Freakless chic. Oh. oh! Now you wouldn't want that coming out of your face, would you? <laughs> or anybody else's for that matter. <laughs> Mind you, I do nurture a nasty streak. There's a few lips I wouldn't mind moving to the sound of me. Mature methane. Oh! Treat yourself. Laugh. Oh, oh. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, love. Oh, I'd been to, you know, Julie and Linda's wig clinic. Mm. I know I don't need a wig on Dessa, but I've never had head for rats and I need something to keep me bonds warm. Coming back, just passing the Stratford Arndale, I looked up and seen a woman perched on the roof takes one look at me and shouts this is for you Chris Murray and jumps well she was everywhere all over the Metro News windows oh transpires she'd been on that BBC 3 program dearie you might as well cut the crap and feed your kid chunks of lard because you're killing them this presenter woman gets parents in Badly lit MI5 style industrial units and 
publicly humiliates them into changing the diets of the morbidly obese children. Then to top it off, she shows them graphic graphics of the children practically morphing into near wolfing into what can only be described as zombie flesh eaters on smack. Well, the public pressure was obviously too much for this poor mother. She caught a 37 stone 10 year old daughter experimenting with baby doll chic lingerie and kiddie fiddling full entrapment chat rooms. Oh, said the show ruined her daughter's life. That she'd gone off the support rails and the straw that broke the overbed hoist support was catching her daughter eating a wagon wheel multi-pack at that. At three in the morning? I don't know. It's coming to something when you can't even mess your own kids up with your very own special brand of family madness. When I caught my Geoffrey, I said, he's going to have all the good things in life I never had. Like ready meals, credit cards, digital picture frames and all the ultrasonic jewellery and eyeglass cleaner I can provide. You just want to do your best. Hmm. Threw herself right off the Arndale. Well, it's not her fault. She had no concept of healthy eating. Lacked basic social skills and had the IQ of some random imbecile. Oh, she was a broken woman. But in her defence, her daughter was well into her fitness. Mm. Fitness videos. Watched them night and day. Retinately, she was fitter than Jane Fonda. Oh, well, Elsie says she's not up to the dam or the flight and still can't recall meeting a, a youth in Asia. Any road. She's told her family she's not going to, to that. She'd rather kill herself first. <laughs> no, she doesn't want to be messing about with all that foreign muck at her age. She's burnt out as it is. In my opinion, she peaked too soon. Joy riding at eight. I can tell she's given up now. Goes in a shop, buys something, then just empties a purse and looks blankly at the checkout staff. Oh, on Dessa, turns out that Elsie has in fact got the gift. Oh, yeah. A copper wire eyebrows weren't tuning into the lo local radio station. They were tuning into that recently deceased woman who threw herself off the Arndale. Elsie was acting like a Conduct to the other side. This woman through Elsie was desperately trying to contact her family. She wanted to tell her daughter that fortunately everything is thin in the next life. Well, apart from God. Who does carry the weight of the world on his shoulders? Ips and abdominal region. And does have an unusual amount of back fat. He is trying the soup and cocktail stick diet in the new year. As much soup as you can eat using only a cocktail stick. Oh, it's not easy being omputent. Oh, no. Mr. Love. Well, I've done you a lovely couple of corned beef sandwiches and left them under a bit of cling film. Oh, that I sounds play. lovely, Andessa. See, be seeing you again, love. You yeah. all right, my love? All right. Bye-bye, lovey. Love. I'll lock you in now.